So last week, my friend and fellow YouTuber Tal Prompts did a video showcasing some amazing cinematic shots. So I was pretty impressed with the generation. So I thought I would give it a go myself using the Flux image generator and Runway Gen 3. Now, after some extensive testing, I discovered what ChatGPT referred to as Ultra Enhanced Cinematic Prompts. Now these prompts are a game changer when it comes to AI video creation. And they're gonna be a game changer when it comes to visual storytelling. So in this video, I'm going to showcase some of my best practices so that you guys can incorporate these techniques into your own AI videos. Now first, let me show you how Flux compares to Leonardo AI and Mid Journey. Guys, I want you to comment down below and let me know which generations you like the most. Now, before I showcase all of the various prompts, I want to set you guys up for success with this really cool tip. I want you guys to head to ChatGPT and I want you all to enter this prompt right here. This chat will now act as a prompt guide for you and will provide you prompts to generate the images. Next, go to Runway Gen 3 and click on the prompt guide here. I want you guys to copy all of the information here and screenshot the images. Now head back to ChatGPT and start a new chat. I want you guys to provide all of the screenshots, all of the information, and I want you guys to instruct this GPT as your official Runway Gen 3 prompt guide. So now you have an official prompt guide for Flux and also Runway Gen 3. So let's give this a test run. So let's head back to the original prompt guide that we set up, which was for Flux. And I want you guys to enter this prompt right here, okay? All right, so now it's provided me three random prompts, okay? Now, don't copy them. Let's take it a step further. So we're gonna instruct ChatGPT to ultra enhance the prompt, okay? Let's see what we get. All right, so now it's provided me the prompts again, but you can see here, they've been ultra enhanced. Now, the reason why I did this is the Flux generator in Krea can take up to 1800 characters. Anyway, let's grab the prompts, let's head to Flux and let's generate the images. All right, so the images have been generated. The first one is a cinematic ultra wide shot, okay? And you can see there, comes out very nice. The next one's a dynamic tracking shot, okay? And look at that. It's, oh wow, that's very nice. I'm really interested to see how this comes out in our uh, video. And the last one is an ultra intimate close-up shot, okay? Yeah, look, not bad. It's pretty realistic here. All right, let's save the three that I like. I'm gonna save this one. I am going to save this one. And let's save this one here. Now we're always going to enhance the images while I like doing so as well, but you don't have to. I've been getting some good results without it, but I love using the Krea Enhancer, okay? So grab the image, enhance it. All right, so the images have been enhanced. So I know you guys wanna see the before and after. So there's the before and there's the after on the first one. Very nice. Here's the second one, you know what? Even the first shot's pretty nice, yeah, but I like what it's done. You can see the rain a little bit more. And here's the third one, yeah, you can see the people in the background a little bit more. Either way, I'm impressed with all three, so let's save all of them. All right, now I want you guys to head to that Runway Gen 3 prompt guide. Grab all of the images and upload them onto here. So I wrote on here, provide me cinematic prompts for all three images. The first image is a close-up, the second is a tracking shot, and the third is an ultra-wide shot. All right, so now it's provided me three separate cinematic shots, each for the individual image. Let's grab the first one, which is the close-up cinematic shot. Let's head to Runway Gen 3, where I've uploaded the image. Let's crop it, okay? And let's do a five-second prompt and press Control-V, 
and let's click generate twice. All right, so the generations are done. Thank you so much, Gen 3 Alpha Turbo. So let's press play and let's see what we get. Oh, you can, it's pretty good. He's waving his hand. There's people in the background, it's moving. Uh, let's have a look at the second generation. And you know, also very nice, very realistic, uh, very cinematic. So that was a great example. Now I'll quickly do the other two as well. All right, so the second generation is done. Check this one out. You guys are gonna love this one. Oof. That is absolutely beautiful, literally. Like the wheel is moving as well. Uh, the motion and just like the rain. This is actually, and I'm actually, wow. I'm actually shocked that I got this. And this is first attempt, mind you. Like this didn't take me like five or 10 times. This was like, like first attempt. Here's the other one as well. Um, yeah, it's an ultra wide angle shot. Just moves around. It gives it a little bit more of a cinematic vibe. Love this. All right, so now I'm gonna showcase and break down all of the different types of cinematic shots that you can generate. First, we have establishing shots. And these are wide shots that set the scene and they give the audience a sense of location and atmosphere before diving into the action. Next is over the shoulder shots. Now this shot frames one character from behind, focusing on what they're looking at and it's great for conversations creating a sense of intimacy and drawing the viewer into the character's perspective. Now let's look at close-up character moments. Now these shots focus tightly on the character's face or specific details, capturing emotions and nuances that are often missed in wider shot. Now they're perfect for highlighting key moments and making the audience feel connected to the character. Next is the dolly shot, and this shot involves moving the camera smoothly towards or away from the subject often creating a dramatic effect and it's commonly used to reveal details or to build tension as the scene unfolds. And now we have the low angle shot and this shot is taken from below the subject looking up and it's often used to make a character or object appear powerful, dominant or opposing, adding a sense of strength or intimidation to the scene. So next is the high angle shot and this shot is taken from above looking down on the subject and it's often used to make the character or object appear smaller, weaker or more vulnerable or creating a sense of scale or emphasizing a character situation. Next is the tracking shot and this shot involves moving the camera alongside the subject following their movement for a scene and it's great for maintaining the focus on the subject while adding a dynamic sense of motion and it's often used in action sequences or to keep up with the character on the move. And lastly, we have the Dutch angle. This shot tilts the camera to one side, creating a slanted horizon, and it's often used to convey unease, tension, or disorientation, adding a dramatic and sometimes unsettling effect to the scene. So that's it, guys. I just wanted to come on here and showcase what I was able to come up with. Uh, go give it a try yourselves. Let me know in the comment section below if there's anything else you'd like me to look at. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.